92. <laughs> 92, how do you do? Uh, I enjoy watching how things like transplants grow and how my garden <laughs> develops some, sometimes <laughs> and how they always seem to cause me to take to God the things that I see in them and to really ask him as the creator of all you know what he intended or really to give him thanks lots of times in appreciation for how he coordinated things to become the way they are like this plant you know this plant really is this kind of green and dark but when it gets in the sun it's kind of like this it gets light and variegated now not all plants are that way but for me it's kind of a lesson in how I as a sinful person well not like that plant there are times where when I was potted literally <laughs> no I didn't smoke pot but when I was potted you know I was a dark leafed just a cutting from the world and its ways and placed in a plant and when the light shined on me then it was like the dark green or the sin of my life became variegated it was less and less and less so until I became a variegated plant that I may not be white <laughs> but I'm getting there are you that's what I get out of sometimes just coming out to sit relax read to talk to Jesus about the things that are going on in the world and my life the things that I have no control over <laughs> most of it <laughs> the things that I don't want control over all of it you know and the joy that I have in knowing that it won't be long and I'll see him and that the day will come and all this will pass away and that even plants like this will rejoice in that day it will be awesome I, I so look forward to the millennium but I also look forward to beyond that that there isn't much in this world that really catches my eye or piques my attention and I've been a lot of places but I do look forward to what they point towards and what they indicate about what's going to come. And for that, I thank them for it, as I thank God. When thou goest thy way, when thou goest, <laughs> when you go, <laughs> thy way shall be open before thee step by step, one step at a time. The Lord never builds bridges of faith except under the feet of the faith-filled traveler. If he builds the bridge a rod ahead, it would not be a bridge of faith. That which is of sight is not of faith. There is a self-opening gate which is sometimes used in country roads. It stands fast and firm across the road as the traveler approaches. If he stops before he gets to it, it won't open. But if he will drive right at it, his wheels press the springs below the roadway or the triggers and the gate swings open to let him through. He must push right, go straight forward, and then it changes. It opens. And it will continue to be closed. They actually put wagon in here, which shows you how old these are. It's a wagon gate with a spring load, you know, it goes whit, whit. Anyways, this illustrates the way to pass every barrier on the road of duty. Whether it is a river, a gate, or a mountain, all the child of God has to do is to go right for it. If it is a river, it will dry up when you are near enough to it and still pushing on. If it is a mountain, it will be lifted up and cast in the sea when you come squarely up without flinching to whether you thought it was. Is there a great barrier across your path of duty just now? Just go for it. <laughs> and that's written way before 
the expression, just go for it. In the name of the Lord, and it won't be there. We sit and weep in vain. The voice of the Almighty says, up, onward, forevermore. Do it, go forward. Let us move on and step out boldly, though it be into the night, and we can scarcely see the forest or the alpine pass, which discloses but a few rods of its length from any single point of view. Press on. Just because you can't see the road ahead of you doesn't mean that God doesn't want you to go for it. If necessary, we will find even the pillar of cloud and fire to mark our journey through the wilderness. There are guides and wayside inns along the road. We will find food and clothes and friends at every stage of the journey. And as Rutherford so quaintly says, however matters go, the worst will be a tired traveler in a joyful, sweet, and welcome home. You know, that's the reality of life is that, you know, whatever may have you may have run into at this stage of your life, if you're young and in the 20s, you think that you know it all. <laughs> and wait till you run into, you know, like all kinds of situations and circumstances that don't allow you to be strong and conquering in the name of the Lord. If you're old and wise, you begin to see that, you know, all that you go through, whether it be the conquering or whether it be the failing, whether it be the ups and downs, the joys, whether it be a marriage or a divorce, whether it be a child's death or a child's life, that whether you celebrate the birth or you stand by the grave, that in all of these things, God is with you. You just need to go on. You're going home. This isn't a journey of a beginning and an end. This is a journey of heading towards a destination. You have a place you're called, chosen, and especially selected to go to. It's not necessarily heaven, but it is a place that God has prepared for you. You will be in New Jerusalem. You will be with Jesus. You will walk with God. Why? Because God loves you, and he's drawing you to him every day as you seek his face, as you listen to him speak, as you find yourself forgiven by his grace as you discover his mercy in allowing you to fall down and to rise up again or to pass through the trials without failing in everything that you've gone through so far to this day god is preparing you for a destiny for a future oh sure there's things that you're accomplishing now and it's a purpose for you to do and to be and to will of his good pleasure in where you're at right now but also, there's a future that you have, that he has laid up plans that are made just for you. They're designed and coordinated to bring you to that expected place. Now, where is that? <laughs> Jesus is there. He's there now. He's getting it ready. You want to go? I do. So just remember that. In everything you go through and everything you do, you can seek the Lord and make it easier on yourself, or you can, you know, kind of stumble and bumble along your way. But one way or another, when God's got a hold of you, and God wants you to go forward with confidence and boldness, He's going to look at some of your childish stumblings, like children playing in the sand, and just say, Okay, you got dirty, get up, clean yourself off, and keep going. So just do it. Just do it.